here is another question from one of our viewers and uh, if you have them feel free to leave them in the comment area or email them to me some of them are pretty good and some of them i can't use but in this one here i'm going to take an old house with a crawl space and subfloor framing where we're going to have joist sitting on top of a foundation stem wall or in this case here on top of a brick wall and that would end up looking something like this after we formed it and poured it and i'm going to go ahead and go over a step-by-step -step assembly process however i won't be providing you with every detail so if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comment area and i will answer them as soon as possible so the first thing i want to do is put a piece of sheet metal run it across here to protect this side of the framing from any moisture that could come from this side over here and for those of you who don't know what moisture does to wood i would suggest watching a few more of our videos so we are going to create a form that will go around the perimeter of our building and the top of the form will be the same height as the top of the inside floor unless you're going to be modifying one of the other sides and there's a very good chance you will need to dig under the existing foundation a little bit I've had to do this on quite a few buildings that I did because the new footings are usually a little deeper than the older footings and depending upon the framing you might need to add some blocks before installing the sheet metal just make sure that the sheet metal is installed before you pour the concrete and make sure that the sheet metal isn't sticking up I've actually made this mistake before and had to bend it over and it won't be too bad for carpeting or other flooring however it could be a nightmare for the workers to walk across and trip over and of course that's the reason why I'm pointing it out you might want to just lower it a little bit just to make sure that it isn't going to be sticking up and after you remove the wall you can add a furring strip here and this will all depend upon what stage of the process you will need to do this because if you're going to leave these exterior walls to protect the interior of the existing building which is what I usually did then you'll simply add that furring strip later now if you notice we do not have any access to the crawl space from this side and that's because we're not going to need it we're going to be filling in the entire section of the new building foundation with concrete so we will not need an access hole we will not need to create an access hole from the inside of the foundation over here or create one on the outside of the building however if I was going to install a wood framed floor then I would need access to the area underneath here next up let's go ahead and take a look at some dowels that might be required by a structural engineer and the location along with the depth of how far they're going to go into the existing foundation will be provided by the structural engineer now on a brick building like this one here you might be required to modify it a little differently and i will provide you with a little more information about that towards the end of the video so in our example here we are going to have number four rebar that is about a half inch in diameter going around the middle of the footings our footings for the single story room addition are going to be 12 inches wide and 12 inches deep and then we're going to install our stem wall rebar and then install the inside form boards so that we can pour the footings and the stem wall at the same time so we're not going to have a dowel here the rebar here wouldn't go into the concrete or the brick and on this side of the wall we're only going to be able to go in the thickness of the wall and that might only be about eight inches and i really don't think an engineer is going to do that with a brick wall if it's concrete that's probably going to be a thumbs up on that one but on brick it might require something different so our rebar is going to be lapping don't forget our lap is going to be 40 times the diameter of the rebar half inch rebar will require a minimum of a 20 inch lap and that will be both here and where the dowels are next up let's go ahead and install the inside form boards and our form boards are going to be a little bit lower 
or the thickness of the floor slab. And you can do this either way. I can either do it like this or raise the forms to the top of the floor so that the top of the stem wall will be the same height as the top of our floor. And I think either way will work fine. It will basically be up to you or your building designer as to what they choose to do. Just keep in mind that that is another option. And we will need a way to connect the floor slab to the stem walls. And that will be by using the shaped rebar here at a 90 degree angle. And that will make a little more sense once we get a little further in the video. Now do not forget to install your anchor bolts. This information right here would be worth watching the entire video. Because if your anchor bolts are longer than the thickness of the slab, then they're actually going to be embedded in the stem walls. And yes, I have seen that mistake made, even though I have not had the pleasure of making that one myself. And even though I have the rebars spaced 20 inches on center here, you might need to space them a little closer or even a little further apart. Now these pieces of rebar right here usually connect to the stem wall rebar that will be perpendicular to them. And sometimes the anchor bolts might need to connect to the rebar also. I know that's something that a lot of engineers draw on the plans. However, it isn't always that easy to do. The next step will be to pour the concrete for your stem walls. And of course, now you can see why we have the shaped rebar here and our anchor bolts embedded in the stem wall concrete. And don't forget to lower one side of the rebar so that the other rebar will actually lap over it. And that will make a little more sense once I install the rebar grid that we're going to put in here. Next up, let's go ahead and remove the inside form boards. And then just take another quick tour here of the interior and how the metal is separating the concrete from the wood. You don't have to worry about separating the concrete from the existing brick or concrete. Just make sure that it's separated from the wood. Now here's the next thing that might be required by an engineer, and that would be to install some type of a connector that would connect the home addition to the existing house. And that can be done using some type of a hold down that can bolt or attach to the floor joist and then using some type of an all thread or long bolt like I have here. Now the advantage of using an all thread is that you could install a nut on both sides of the hold down and both sides of the square washer to prevent it from moving while you're pouring the concrete. And you can see here where something like this would definitely connect the two floors together. The next step will be to backfill this section right here with a solid fill material. And most of the time gravel is considered to be 100% compacted material. However, there might be another fill, something better in your area. And the fill will usually fill up to either the top of the stem wall in a situation like this, or if we have the stem wall going all the way up to the top, it's going to fill below the thickness of the floor slab. And in our example here, we're using a six inch thick floor slab. Yours might be a little smaller. And another example of how we have one piece of rebar lower. So the rebar going along this side here is a little lower, this one and this one. And the rebars going in this direction here are a little higher. And again, that's so that our grid will work out. You can see it right here. And I'm not expecting you to make this mistake here because I just told you about it. So the rebar running in this direction here goes under the rebar that's running in this direction here. And that is really about it for this video. Let's go ahead and start wrapping it up by just kind of traveling around here. And we can go ahead and pour a concrete slab. And that is about all I have to say about that. And I've only done this once, and I don't think I would ever do it again, because it was a lot of work. And I really didn't know better at the time. I thought I was actually going to be building something better, which I probably did. But at the same time, I blocked off a couple of the foundation vents and actually had to install some tubing in the floor slab to allow air to go through this area. You might not need to do that. You might be able to get away with adding a few more vents on this side and on the other side over here. 
And of course, that was another lesson that I learned on some of my home remodeling projects. 